Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and it is a flame uh, going all over the world right now. Trouble in every spot imaginable. We have everything from uh, the riots in Israel, and not only in Israel, all different parts of the world. Beirut, uh, seeing a lot of protests against the U.S. Embassy there. There's been warnings throughout Europe. There have been uh, protests staged in different places around the world after President Trump has recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Even the United Nations uh, voted and 14 nations came against uh, the United States' this proclamation of Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. And of course, the U.S. was the only nation that stood by their, their uh, stance for Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. And quite frankly, I don't see where the whole issue of declaring Jerusalem as the capital of Israel really has been a major issue. It has already been defined that there's two states. There's already been secret negotiations and acceptance of a two-state solution, giving East Jerusalem to the Palestinians and West Jerusalem to the, to the Israelis. And so therefore, it's kind of interesting why they're doing this. This is only no doubt to bring about the violence in order to try to cause and push the Jews out of Jerusalem. And that's something I can clearly see that may certainly be fulfilled in the near future. Micah's prophecy, chapter four. I don't have time to go into that because I forgot to put that on my uh, list here. It just happened to come to me now. But again, I can't help but think of uh, Ezekiel 38 getting ready to form into, to shape into being there. As we see, Erdogan slams Israel as a terrorist state that kills children. RT reporting this. And I knew that Erdogan wasn't just going to sit by silently uh, while this move by President Trump took place uh, because there is so much hatred towards the Jewish people inside of Israel. It's just unprecedented. And that's only becoming more and more rea uh, in reality. And even news organizations around the world who just uh, obviously come against Israel. Now, not saying that our government doesn't have issues, not saying that there's things that are being done with the Palestinians that should not be done. We realize there's some house cleaning that needs to be done to realize that the Palestinians who are the children of Ammon, which are actually modern day Jordanians that have migrated into this land here and have been here for quite some time, no doubt many of them born in the land and should live in amongst the Jewish peoples. But you have to remember what happened between Lot and Abraham. There was always a division, always fighting, and they they just couldn't live together. And finally, Lot went down to the Jordan towards, uh, towards the Dead Sea, the plains of the Jordan there, and he inhabited there. You know, it wasn't in the mountain region as we see today, but nonetheless, it is what it is, and we need to work together to live together as long as we're in this situation. Uh, so I'm not for the two states, but clearly two states have already been decided, and unfortunately, the world is still duped into thinking it's not. Uh, let's move on with some more issues about this. I want to take it right into uh, uh, actually Zechariah's prophecy or Zechariah chapter 12. As many of you know, the burden of the word of the Lord concerning Israel, the saying of the Lord who stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth and formed the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of staggering or trembling and to all the peoples round about. And upon Judah also shall it fall to be in the siege against Jerusalem. So Judah, or the house of Judah here, clearly is the three tribes that have returned, Judah, uh, uh, Benjamin, and of course the Levites. And that's clearly where we're at today. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will make Jerusalem a stone, uh, a burden for all the peoples, and all that burden themselves with it shall be sore wounded, and, then, and all the nations of the earth shall be gathered together against it. And we've been seeing this ever since when uh, President Barack Obama was still in power and he abstained from speaking against uh, uh, Israel as being a nation there. And, and of course, the dividing of the land and all these different uh, nations came together to condemn Israel. This was when, of course, they knew that President Trump would be for Israel. So they were trying to pass another resolution uh, to go against the Israeli government there. Now, I want to show you, though, as we already see here, we know that this is going on. All types of violence is breaking out, especially in Jerusalem. Take a look at this right here. Just some of the images that we're seeing here. If we can get this technical difficulty to quit. There we go. 
So I'll show you some of this from roughly they're filming there. This is some of the, the tensions and, and, and the violence is happening because the protests in the streets of Jerusalem here can't really make out exactly where this is at. Looks like it more than likely this is around uh, not far from the old city there. That's my guess. Don't really know for sure there. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from the image. Sometimes you can pick out exactly where it's at, you, you know, especially when you spend a lot of time in Israel like we have. Uh, but this is the scene everywhere. In fact, today a security guard was stabbed by uh, a Palestinian man, stabbed in the chest, very, very seriously wounded. Uh, very, very bad situation indeed there. Uh, so anyway, Kind of pull that down there. So we going on to other news as well, things that are going on. Russian Su-35, this happened yesterday, chased away a rogue U.S. F-22 jet. Uh, MOD blasts U.S. Air Force for hampering Syrian op. Now the Russians are believing that the U.S. was doing this intentionally uh, in order to justify the possibility or prepare the public for a showdown with the United States and Russia over the skies of Syria. The U.S. has clearly begun to dominate the eastern side of the Jordan River there and trying to make it very well known that this is their land. Now, you know, I'm really getting trouble more and more as I see the tensions between Russia and the United States right now, especially over Syria, a sovereign nation uh, where we're not invited in. And quite frankly, I realize the U.S. claims that they've done a greater job against ISIS militants, which we know that's not true. It was created by Barack Obama, as President Trump clearly has said in his own um, uh, during the campaign trail, he said Obama created uh, ISIS there. We know John McCain had a big hand in, in that, uh, that particular operation as well. There's even, there's been calls that said that Israel was behind ISIS. And, you know, I can't say, I don't know. That troubles me if there were some of those in the government and behind the scenes there uh, facilitating that. But the thing is, is I know Israelis do not want anything to do with ISIS militants to begin with. We're very much against that. Uh, so if there's someone in the Israeli government that was involved with ISIS, that is a tragedy and it needs to be, whoever it would be, needs to be voted out of office and removed. But clearly though, the U.S. was behind it, the Saudis were behind it, the Qatarians were behind ISIS militants working in the country, and even Erdogan, the Turkish government, was behind ISIS militants. So. I don't, I don't know where, where Israel would stand on this uh, unless they're wanting to just help to bring down uh, Syria for the purpose of the Rothschild Zionist movement. And I like to separate between Rothschild Zionism and the true Jewish people, the Israelis, not just the Jews, but both House of Israel and the House of Judah coming together to come back to our homeland. But we have to come the way that Abraham did. We have to come in peace to our homeland, not in violence, but we have to come in peace. And right now, Nations are just stirring it up everywhere you look. Now, as I said, though, things are getting worse so between the U.S. and with Russia over Syria right now. And it reminds me, as I seen somebody posted the other day, that little boy uh, or the young man there from Israel that had that near-death experience that said that Obama was Gog. And of course, I've stated all along here recently, or not all along, but I stated recently to you that if they try to take Trump out of office, now I realize it caused a big fuss in America. Now, I'm, I'm not wanting to see Trump go. I appreciate his stand with Israel. Although it brings a lot of, a lot of repercussions around the world, I do appreciate his stand for Israel. Uh, now, that being said, though, with this whole issue with the collusion with Russia, they, would, they could probably use a loophole in the law to say that the election was fraudulent. If the election was fraudulent, well, then the acting president during the time of the election would, to me, have a right to go back into office. And that might make the whole story of Gog and Magog altogether different because not only would Obama probably stand behind or support uh, indirectly Turkey and all these other nations that would be willing to go against Israel to overthrow it, fulfilling the Gog of Magog prophecy and, and Zechariah 12 of Jerusalem being a burdensome stone to all those nations that gather against it. It could really become a major, major issue there. Anyway. On this article right here, CheckpointsAsia.net, Pentagon now openly threats to shoot down Russian jets over eastern Syria. Just as Russian MOD says US F-22s have already sim simulated attacks on Russian Su-24 bombers, now we've got this news coming out that the US is openly threatening to shoot down 
Russian planes over Syria. That's going to turn into a major mess if something like that happens. Uh, but again, as I stated, Ezekiel 38, as we know, Son of man, set thy face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee about and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses and horsemen of all them clothed most gorgeously, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords, Persia, Kush, Put, with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of his bands, and the Togama and the uttermost parts of the north, and all of his bands, even many peoples with thee. Be thou prepared and be prepared for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou uh, guard, uh, guarded of them. Now, we know that this is coming. Let me go on. After many days thou shalt be mustered for service. In the latter years thou shalt come against the land that is brought back from the sword, that is gathered out of many peoples against the mountains of Israel, which have been a continual waste, but it is brought forth out of the peoples, and they, and they dwell safely, all of them. And thou shalt ascend, thou shalt come like a storm, and thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, and thou and all thy bands and many peoples with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall come to pass in the day that the things shall come into thy mind and thou shalt devise an evil device. Now, I got to tell you, friends, we're looking at this in modern times. So all this nonsense going on out there with a lot of different communities that are out there that are saying that the Jews that are in Israel today are not the real Jews. Well, I have to tell you, friends, everything that I can see biblically is starting to line up. So if they're not the right Jews, you better find the right Jews and you better get home real quick, like because prophecies are about to be fulfilled without you. So you can take all this nonsense that people keep uh, trying to push that, that the Jews in Israel today are not the real Jews. I'm not saying that there's not some that are not. No doubt there is. There's a lot of false ones in amongst them. Uh, but there's always been weeds amongst the tares, as the Bible also prophesies about. So very troubling situation. Pray for Israel. Pray for the people there that are living there. Pray not, don't just, don't just pray for the Jewish people only. Think about the Palestinian people that don't want this violence also. You know, we do need to pray. Regardless, we know things will happen, but pray for both sides. You know, that's the best way to handle it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.